What's going on guys, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Amigos Code. In this course, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Spring Boot. Spring Boot is by far one of the most popular frameworks and uh, I've asked what people want to see and they said that they wanted to see a course specific on Spring Boot and also some, some other tutorials. So this first course is basically the introduction on how this framework does work. And we're going to build an API where we're going to have three layers and also we're going to connect to a real database. And you'll see um, you know, the power of this amazing framework. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Also give me a thumbs up so I can keep on recording these courses. And um, yeah, so uh, if you're not part of the Amigos Code community, go ahead and join because the community is growing and I would love you to have you there. Without further ado, let's kick off this course. Right, before we proceed, um, I just want to say that if you want to take this course at your own pace and receive a certificate, this course is available on my website for free. Yes, for free, you can enroll and you will get a certificate. Also, practice as I teach because that's the best way of you learning any new framework or programming language. So I don't want I don't want to waste your time. Uh, I want to add value. So practice as I teach. Also, join both the private Facebook group as well as Discord to engage with other students. If you have any questions, you can ask questions there and engage. Uh, and yeah, basically, we're just building an awesome community uh, where people are learning from each other. And um, yeah, you should be part of it. And finally, if you need to have access to the entire source code at the end of this course, I'm going to provide you with the GitHub link where you can find all of the examples. Without further ado, let's kick off this course. Spring Boot is an amazing framework for building applications, whether you want to build backend applications or full stack applications using Java or Kotlin, Spring Boot is the framework to go. Spring Boot is by far the most popular framework right now. And you, by learning Spring Boot, you will be in demand for jobs. Everybody uses Spring Boot and you should also. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and also go ahead and join the both private Facebook group as well as Discord. So as I said, Spring Boot is an amazing framework that gives you everything you need in order to build applications. If you need security, you can use security modules available. If you need logging, you can use the logging integration, connecting to databases, whether you want to connect to MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL, they made it super easy for you as a developer to connect to any database. Metrics, so checking how your application is behaving in production. And the cool thing is, is that it's very easy for you to learn as a beginner, as you'll see in this course. Also, it's production ready. You can build microservices, has dependency injection built in, configuration, great community, and a bunch more. So I'm super excited for this course. Next, let's go ahead and learn how to get started with Spring Boot. So for this course, we're going to build this entire application, excluding the front end part, where we're going to have the API right here. So the API will receive get request, post, put, and delete. And then we'll have a service layer. So this is mainly for business logic. And then we'll have a data access layer. And this layer right here is responsible for connecting to any database. So in this course, we're going to use a real database and you'll see how easy it is for you to implement all of this with Spring Boot. Now, in order for us to get started with Spring Boot, let's go ahead and navigate to Spring Initializer. So I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video where you can follow along. So in this website right here, this is where we can bootstrap any given Spring Boot application. So here you can see that we can pick from Maven or Gradle. So I'm going to leave Maven 
and then the languages, Java, Kotlin, or Groovy. I want to stick with Java and then pick any version. So literally any version, I'm going to leave the 2.4.1. This might be different by the time you watch this video, but everything that I'm going to show you today will work in later versions. Then right here, you can see that we can customize the project metadata. So I'm just going to leave everything as default and for packaging, go ahead and select jar. So this is the most common, common packaging type for Java application these days. And then for Java version, I've got the 15 installed. So I'm just going to select that. And now let me scroll up and right here, let's go ahead and select dependencies. In here, we can pick dependencies that our project needs. So this list is quite huge and by all means, feel free to explore this list. But for this course, let's go ahead and select the Spring Web. So build web, including RESTful applications using Spring MVC. So right here, I'm going to press Command and then B because I want to select multiple dependencies right here. So I've selected that and let's scroll down. So they've got a bunch of things, spring security if you want. So we're going to leave that out for this video. And right here, go ahead and select spring data JPA. So we're going to connect to a database by using JPA and Ibernate. And you'll see this in a second. Let's also scroll down. And right here, we can use an in-memory database if we want to or if you want to connect to a real database such as Postgres, you can also do it. For this course, let's connect to a Postgres database. So here, let's select the Postgres SQL driver. So I've just pressed command there again, and you can see that you can connect to Mongo, or actually you can um, work with Mongo, Spring Data Reactive Mongo, Elasticsearch, and basically the list goes on and on and on. RabbitMQ, WebSockets, Kafka, and Spring Batch, Java Mail. And you can see that the list is just crazy, including Graphite and Prometheus. So now that I have selected everything, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna escape out of this. So press escape, there we go. And also what I'm gonna do is actually share this with you so you can pretty much just download the exact same dependencies from the link of this video. Now, if I open up my desktop and there we go. So you can see that we have the demo.zip and this already has been extracted. Next, let's go ahead and open this project with IntelliJ. For this course, I'm going to be using IntelliJ, which is by far my favorite IDE and the one that I recommend for most developers. So I've got the ultimate edition right here, but if you have the community edition, this will also work. The reason why I love the ultimate edition is because it has lots of great features when working with frameworks such as Spring Boot and also when working with databases. So I highly recommend you to give it a try. So I'm going to open up the ultimate edition. And by the way, I'm using the JetBrains toolbox. So this tool right here allows you to download and manage all of the IDEs. And there we go. So now I'm going to click on open and then navigate to desktop and then in here, open up demo and open this folder. So from this point, it should pick up everything needed for this project, including downloading all of the dependencies. Just give it a second and there we go. So you can see that that was super quick. Now, what I want you to do is to open up the demo folder and then open up the palm.xml. So in here, you can see that we have the project metadata here and then the dependencies. So we selected Spring Boot Starter Data JPA and then Starter Web as well, right here. And the dependency for Postgres is right here. So this is the, so this is what gives us the ability to connect and work with Postgres databases. And right here we have this dependency, 
given to us by default and this is for testing and to be honest this is all right here you can see the java version 15 that i've selected and this is pretty much the palm.xml and also you can see that we have the parent dependency right here which is spring boot starter parent there you have it you've successfully created an empty spring boot application next let's go ahead and start the application and watch it running to start the application let's go ahead and close this pom.xml and in here in this demo folder right here so we have source and inside of source we have main and then test so this is where all of the test code goes so let's open up demo application tests so you see that we have one empty test right here so this is where you put all of your testing code if you want to learn more about testing go ahead and check my website where i've got a full course covering unit testing integration testing mocking and tdd now let me close this and if i open up the java folder right here so here this is where we put our code but more importantly we have this demo application so if i open that up so this is a bare bone spring boot application and you can see the annotation right here now inside of java so inside of actually main we have resources and static template and application dot properties so this application dot properties this is where we configure all the properties for our application as well as environment specific properties and you'll see this in a second when we connect to a real database then we have static so static and templates this is when you are doing web development such as working with html css javascript and all of that good stuff now open up the demo application so let's actually run the application and right here you should see this play button or you can right click and then run demo application or you can run the application from here so let me just run the application here and just give it a second so just to let you know that this should fail because it will try to connect to a database right here you see that fail to determine suitable driver right here so what i'm going to do here is the following i'm going to open up the palm.xml and where we have the spring boot starter data jpa let's go ahead and comment this dependency for now there we go and what i'm going to do is right click on the palm.xml and then maven and then reload project so sometimes it might not reload automatically but this makes sure that it's actually removing this dependency from here now let's go ahead and start the application and there we go so you see that no errors so bear in mind that we will put this dependency back once we are ready to connect to our database so here you can see that we have in the logs tomcat started on port 8080 right here which means that we have a web server up and running and if we try to hit our web server on this port we will get nothing because we haven't implemented any endpoints Next, let me go ahead and show you how easy it is for you to implement a simple RESTful API. So far, we have the server up and running on port 8080. So what I want you to do is to navigate to your web browser and then type localhost, colon, and then 8080. Enter. And you can see that we do get a white label error page. And right here, the status is 404, which means that it's not found. So let's go ahead and quickly implement an endpoint that will give us a JSON back. So here, let me go back to IntelliJ. Let me stop the server. And here, I'm going to hide this. I'm going to close palm.xml. And remember, this dependency right here we will add it back once we are ready to connect to our database so close that and 
application.properties as well. So here, what I'm going to do is right within this demo application class, go ahead and type add and then rest and then controller. Now let's go ahead and have a class. So here, public or actually a method. So public and then say string and then hello. And right here, what we're going to do is simply return hello and then world just like this. Now, in order for this method to be served as a restful endpoint, we have to annotate it with at, and then we have get mapping. We have put mapping, post mapping, so on and so forth. And you will learn all of this in a second. For now, we want to get something out from our server. So here at get and then mapping. And this annotation makes this class as a restful makes this class to serve rest endpoints. And the only rest endpoint that we have in here is this one string hello and returns hello world. Now let's go ahead and start the server. There we go. Server up and running. Let me open up my web browser. And before we had a 404. Now if I refresh, you can see that we have hello world in here. And what's really interesting in here is that if I change this to list, so I'm going to change this to a list of and then string in here. And here I'm going to say list dot and then of, and then I'm going to pass hello as one element and then world as another element, just like that. And if I restart the server, so stop and rerun. There we go. Now, if I open up my web browser again and then reload the page, you can see that we have a JSON back. So hello world. So this is actually really nice. There we go. So you can see that we have hello world. And basically we didn't do anything and we get a, a JSON array out of the box. So this is really awesome. So obviously we don't want this simple API where we have a low world, but we want to build all of this. So what we're going to do next is the following. We're going to create a class right here. We're going to model it as a student, and then we're going to give it some attributes and behaviors. And then ultimately students will end up in a database. But for now, let's just begin with a simple class that will represent a student and then implement the student based off everything in this diagram. So let's take this student right here, represent it in a class so that we can start building this entire API. So let me go ahead and open up IntelliJ. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is to create a package. So here I'm going to create a package. And I'm going to name this as student. So you will also learn how to structure your applications using Spring Boot. So inside of this package, now we have to pull every code, which is student related. So here we need to have the student class. So, so, so this will be our model right here. So public class student. And now let's go ahead and define private. And then we want long for ID. We also want private and then a string name. So here, name, age, date of birth and age. So here, private and then integer age. And we actually need private and then local and then date. And this will be a DOB for date of birth. And finally, I've almost forgot. So let's have an email. So string and then email just like that. And looking into this diagram, this should be email. Actually, let's change this to email right here. And we are good to go. So now let's generate the getters and setters and constructors. 
So here, let's go ahead and generate the constructor. So constructor, and I'm going to have three constructors. So I'm going to have the no R constructor. I'm also going to have another one with everything. There we go. And let me put this on a new line, just like that. So the constructor with everything. Let me also have another one without the ID. And you'll see why in a second, because the database will generate the ID for us. There we go. And new line, just like that. And finally, let's generate the getters and setters. And obviously, we could use something like Lombok to remove all of this boilerplate code. There we go. And finally, to string. So to string, and then OK. And there you have it. So now we have a class called student. So what I'm going to do now is open up demo application. And instead of a list of string, I'm going to say list of and then student. And then in here, what I'm going to do is on a new line, I'm going to delete that and, say, and then say new and then student. And let's pass the ID of one and then name Mariam. And this has to be one L because it's long. There we go. And here let's have Mariam dot and then Jamal at gmail.com comma. And we also need to pass the date of birth. So local and then date and then dot and then of. And if I put this full screen, there we go. And here let's pass the first what year. So let's say that she was born in 2000 and then the month. So let's say that she's from January. And then the date, let's say the 5th of January, just like that. And then comma. And then here, let's just simply say 21. We could actually subtract this. So to subtract now minus the date of birth, but we'll do that in a second. So now let's go ahead and start the server. And by the way, you see that we have ID column, name column, email column. Don't add these because these are added by IntelliJ. Again, don't add these. So if I open up my web browser now, and then here, remember before we had this list, if I reload the page, you can see that now we have an array of and then objects. So our class was converted into a JSON object right here. And we have an array surrounded by it. So this, it's really awesome. And you can see how easy it is for us to start building APIs with Spring Boot. Right, so we have this class right here, and we also expose an endpoint that returns an array of students. Now is the perfect time for us to get things done in the proper way. So we want to structure our application into this end tier architecture where we have the API layer, service layer, and then data access. So we already have the class student. Let's go ahead and create a class that will serve as the API layer. So open up IntelliJ and right here, I'm going to collapse this expand project and inside of student. So everything will be inside of student. So create a new class and here call it student and then controller. There we go. So now we have this class, which will have all of the resources for our API. So here, remember before, if I open up demo application, we had this annotation right here. So rest controller. So, we, so what we're going to do is remove it from here. And let's also take this get mapping. So I'm going to cut this. So this class right here now should be empty right here. So empty class. And let me remove all of those imports just like that. And you can see the keyboard shortcut. 
Now let's go back to our student controller right here. And here we're going to annotate with at and then rest controller. And then what we also want is to say that this will have a request and then mapping in here. And we can pass a couple of things. So one is the path here and the path will be API and then V1. So version one of our API forward slash and then student. So instead of going to localhost 8080, we now want localhost 8080 API forward slash V1 and then student. Let's also paste the get mapping that we had before here. So put this full screen, but now instead of hello, I'm going to say get and then students. So now we have a get mapping for our student controller. So let's start the application. There we go. If I open up my web browser and right here, remember before we had localhost 8080. So if I try and hit this endpoint, this should not work. But now we've changed it to forward slash API, forward slash V1, and then forward slash student. Enter and check this out. So you see that we have the API working, but now things are much more organized. Next, let's go ahead and create a class that will serve as the business logic for managing students. Right, so we have our API layer right here. Now the API layer should talk to the service layer to get some data and that service layer should also talk to the data access layer to get the data so that it, it does a round trip like this, right? From the client, API, service, data, and then all the way back. So now let's move this so this method here to the service layer. So service layer is mainly responsible for business logic. So here, open up the project tab. And then here we're going to create a new class and then call it student and then service. There we go. And what we're going to do is, so here we're going to take this method so let's take this method and then put it inside of the service. So just like that. And now we can go back to controller and here. So this will no longer be like that. And instead we have to use the method inside of our student service. So here let's have a reference. So private and then final student and then service student service just like that and let's add it to the constructor so let me put this full screen there we go and now i can say return and then student service dot get students so this now is a much better approach and we are using the n tier design pattern. So if I go back to project, or actually open a project and then student service, you can see that now it's being used. But ideally, so this currently is a static list. We also want this to come from a database, but we're going to worry about that in a second. Next, let me go ahead and teach you about some annotations and dependency injection within Spring and Spring Boot. All right, so far we have three classes and within the student controller in here. So let me just put this like this. You can see that we are having a reference to student service. And then here we pass it inside of the controller. Now this is not going to work because we don't have an instance of student service. Now, the way that this would work is if I was to say equals to new and then student service, just like that. And now this will work, right? But 
When writing code, we should avoid stuff like this and use dependency injection as much as possible. So how do we tell that this shouldn't service should be injected into this constructor right here or anything that we pass into this constructor should be injected? Well, we have this annotation called at and then auto and then wired. Now we are saying that this shouldn't service should be auto wired for us. So this will be magically instantiated for us and then injected into this constructor and then all of this will work. But now we have to also tell that this shouldn't service is a class that has to be instantiated, i.e. it has to be a spring bean. So to tell that this is a bean, we can use this class, or actually we can use this annotation called add and then component. Now, if I go back to student controller, you can see that this red error went away because now it knows where to find this bean right here. So if I go back once more, you see that I'm using add component, but with spring, we have annotations that allows us to be more specific. So here, we don't want this to be just a regular component, but we want this to be a service. So at service, at component, they are the exact same thing, but this is more for semantics, right? This is more for readability. Looking at this, you know that this class is meant to be a service class. So the same way that you saw in here for this controller, we use the at and then rest controller. For the service, we use at and then service. Now let's restart the server and then go back to my web browser. And here I'm going to refresh this and you can see that still works. So now we are using dependency injection and we've actually split things into layers. So we have the API layer talking successfully to the service layer and the service layer is giving back some data back to the API layer. Next, let's focus on the data access by connecting to a real database and then store the student inside of the database and then get it back out. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, let's move on. All right, now let's go ahead and connect to a real database. So we've got the API layer, service layer. Now let's focus on this data access layer. For this course, let me go ahead and steal some code from my Spring Data JPA course. And in this course, you'll learn everything that you need to know about Spring Data JPA. So we cover uh, what is Spring Data JPA, how to, how to connect to real databases, how to map classes to tables, the entity lifecycle, queries, paging, sortie, one-to-one -one relationships, one-to-many, many-to-many transactions, and a lot more. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of SRC and then resources and then application properties. And I'm going to grab all of this. So right here, again, I'm going to leave this in the description of this video so you can follow along. Now I'm going to go back to IntelliJ and I'm going to open up the applications dot property or properties and then paste that in. There we go. So this is the configuration that we need in order to connect to a database. So this is the URL, this is the port, and in here, that, and then in here, this is the database. So here, let's call it student instead of Amigos code. And then we have the username and password. So because I'm on a Mac and I'm using Postgres app, so this for local development is empty and then have the JPA create drop. So this means that we have a clean state every time we run the application and then show the SQL. We also want the dialect to be Postgres and then format the SQL. So you'll see all of this in action in a second. 
Now, the easiest way for you to download and install Postgres on a Mac is by installing this application called Postgres app. So it's really straightforward and allows you to connect and experiment with different various versions of Postgres. The default port is, so in here is 5432. If you are on Windows, go ahead and download from enterprisedb.com and I'll leave the link in the description of this video and download for Windows version right here. And you can download the latest version, 13.1 as I speak. Also, I'm gonna leave a link for videos that I've done in the past on how to install the database if you have any troubles. But if you want to learn more about databases, go ahead and check amigosco.com. And if I go to courses, so in here, Spring Data JPA. So here, this course covers everything you need to know in order to work with databases. So I'm gonna leave a link for this course as well. So once you have Postgres installed, we have to create a database. And that's what we're going to do next. To connect from our application to our database, we have to do the following. So in here, remember that we've changed this to student. So this is the database name right here. So I already have a database up and running. And again, if you want to learn how to work with databases, go ahead and check my website. So this is the Spring Data JPA, but I also have a free course just on Postgres including the advanced databases and database design and implementation where you will master everything there is to know about databases. So in here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open up my shell and I'm gonna type PSQL. And if I do a backslash L, you can see that we have a couple of databases in here. But what I want really is if I press Control L is to create a brand new database. So create a database and then call it student and then semicolon. And there we go. So now you can see that we have a database that we can use. Now, if I type backslash and then DU, you can see that I do have two roles. So Amigos code in Postgres. So in here, what I'm gonna do is say grant and then all privileges on and then the database that I've just created, student and then two amigos code. There we go, semicolon and this should be database. So on and then database, there we go, enter and let's also give it to Postgres. So just like that. Now, if I clear the screen and then type backslash and then L, you can see that we have this database right here called student. So if I connect to it, backslash C and then student, and then backslash D and no relations. So now let's open up IntelliJ and I'm gonna open up the palm.xml. Before, remember, we commented out this dependency. So I'm just going to uncomment just like that. And then I'm going to reload the project. So click on palm, right click, and then Maven and then reload project. There we go. And now I can start the application. And there we go. So we actually connected to our database right here. You can see the logs. So we have Ikari started and then completed using Postgres right here. And everything is looking good. But we don't have any tables yet in our database. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do next.
All right, so we've successfully connected to our database. Now what we want to do is to take this student right here and use Spring Data JPA to create a table inside of our database that we can then add, delete, and basically perform all of the CRUD operations against our database. So to do that is very straightforward with Spring Boot and Spring Data JPA. So in here, so this dependency right here that we've just uncommented gives us this ability. And if you want to learn about Spring Data JPA, go ahead and check my course on Spring Data JPA where I teach all of this. So now let me go back in here and open up student class and to map this student to our database, simply type at and then entity right here and then say at and then table. So this one is for Hibernate and this one is for the table in our database. And we also need to say at and then ID. And then here we're going to generate a sequence. So sequence and then generator. And here I'm going to say name equals to and then student and then sequence. And you'll see this in a second. We also need to have the sequence name, which will be the same. And also the allocation size. So allocation size. This will be one. And then here, this will be sequence and then name just like that. And now that we have a sequence generator in here, I'm also going to now say add and then generated value. And then the default or the recommended for Postgres is a sequence. So I'm going to say strategy equals to and then sequence. There we go. And the generator is the sequence that we've just created student underscore and then sequence. And there you have it. So literally, this is everything that we have to do. So now that we've mapped this student class to a table in our database. Next, let's go ahead and start the application and see what is happening under the hood. All right, let's go ahead and test these changes that we've done using Spring Data JPA, uh, using these annotations at entity, at table, and then the ID with a sequence as well. So let's go ahead now and restart the application. And right here, let me put this a little bit bigger. So you can see that we have some logging going on. And there we go. So have a look. So in here, we have some logging and we have create sequence student starting at one increment one. So basically this sequence is this one. So sequence generator and allocation size right here. So increment at one. So that's what it means. And then we have a create table statement in here, have a look, create table, and then student, and then all of these fields. And then the primary key is ID. So this ID right here. And you can see that this was super easy, right? We've just added some annotations. And now we have a table in our database. So if I collapse this, and in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect from IntelliJ to my database. So new data source. So I've just pressed here database, and a new data source, and then PostgreSQL. And localhost, fine database, this will be student, test the connection. You can see that it worked, apply, okay. And now we have one database. Inside we have the public schema. And inside we have the table right here, student. And you can see the columns. And then we have the sequence. 
student sequence. So if I open up my shell, so in here, remember before, when I type backslash D, we had no relations. Now if I type backslash D again, there we go. So you can see that we have this table, student and the sequence. So let me now describe the student. And you can see that we get the exact same thing in here. So we have the index for the primary key and all of these columns. So this is pretty nice. So what we are missing now is this part right here. So the data access layer, we have the database configured up and running with one table called student. Next, let's go ahead and implement this layer right here that will interact with our database. Right, so you saw the power of how we took a class and then we mapped that class to a table in our database. So if you want to learn more about databases and Spring Data JPA, I've got a series of courses focusing just on databases, starting from the ground up, so um, SQL and PostgreSQL. So um, those are the foundation. Those are those are the foundations that you should know. And then I'm going to take you through um, how to design databases, how to use ERD diagram, relationships, um, constraints, transactions, and all of that stuff. And then I've got the advanced database uh, course, and that basically, you know, brings everything together. And then the fourth course is about Spring Data JPA. So you can see that basically it's a, it's a series of courses focusing just on databases. And if you know Spring Data JPA well enough, then you can build, you know, complex applications with complex relationships, um, you know, understanding, for example, indexes, uh, unique constraints, uh, relationships, one to many, many to one. So basically the whole thing it's covered uh, in my spring data JPA course. So I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video so you can go and check the course for yourself. And uh, yeah, I'm, and uh, I would love to have you there. So um, yeah, I just wanted to say this and uh, let's carry on this course. All right, let's go ahead and implement the data access layer. So open up IntelliJ and right here, I'm going to create a class inside of the student package. And this class, I'm going to call it student and then repository. So this is the naming convention for anything that access your database and specifically when you are working with JPA, which we are. So now this has to be an interface and you'll see the power of this in a second. Enter, there we go. So we have the interface there and let me collapse that. Now also let me press command and N1, just like that. Now this interface right here, I'm going to say extends and then JPA and then repository right there. Now you saw that this actually um, is using some generics and we have to specify a couple of things. So first we have to specify T. So the type of object that we want this repository to work with and also the ID for the type that we want. So here, let's go ahead and say student. So this is a type that we want to work with comma. And let me put this just like that so we can see everything. And here, remember the ID for our student. So the type is long. So if I open up student, you can see that the type is long in here. That's why this is long. And this is the type that we want this repository to work upon. Now let's annotate this with at oops, not uh, backslash two, but at, and then repository. So the same way that we have at service, at rest controller, this is at repository, because this interface is responsible for data access. 
And to be honest, this is everything for this layer. Now let's connect things using dependency injection. So in here, open up project and we want to use this interface inside of our service. So in here, let me collapse this. So instead of having a list like this, so a static list, we want to say private final and then student repository. There we go. Then we want to add this to constructor. And then let's also annotate the constructor with add and then auto wired just like that. And now check this out. Instead of saying that we want to return this list, what we're going to say is, so let me actually um, just copy this student because I'm going to need it in a second. But now I'm going to say in here, repository, or actually return and then repository dot and then check this out. So we have a bunch of methods here. We have find all, we can pass the sorting if you want by ID, we can save and we can flush, we can count exists, find one, save all, delete all. And you can see that we have a bunch of methods. And to be fair, we haven't implemented none of this, right? And this is the magic of Spring Data JPA. So here I'm going to say find and then all. So this returns a list to us. And to be honest, this is it. So this interface that we've just implemented, so student repository, this, so if I navigate to this file, you can see that it's an interface that has all of these methods here available to us. We haven't written a single line of SQL or code and we can fetch students from our database. Next, let's go ahead and add some students into our database using this repository and then see that everything will be working. So API to service, data access, fetching from the database and then returning back the response to our client. All right, so let's go ahead and start our server. There we go. So server up and running. And if I open up my web browser, so remember here before we had one student, Miriam. And now if I refresh this, you can see that we have an empty array. And this is because there is no one in our database. And in fact, to prove that to you, so in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say select, oops, select star, and then from, and then student. Semicolon, enter, and have a look, zero rows. So let's go ahead and add some students into our database. So let's go back to IntelliJ. And right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to name it as student and then config. And let's annotate this with add and then configuration. Just like that. So this will be a configuration file. And in here, we want to have a bean. So we want to have this bean right here. So say command line runner. And this guy will take nothing inside there. But here we want to return args. And for now, we're not going to do anything with arguments. And here, let's annotate this with add and then bean so that this runs. And what we're going to do is to have access to our repository. So here we can inject student repository just like that. And I'm going to name it repository. And from this point onwards, what we can do is remember we had a student before. So if, if I press command V, so this is the student that we had before. And let me add semicolon there and then import this and local data as well. And in here, 
what I'm going to do is add a static import just like that. So now this is our student. I'm going to press command V or actually command shift V. And this is Mariam. Let's also create another student. So in here and this time, what I want to do is I want to remove the ID, right? Because this will be generated for, for us by the database. And this will be Alex. So Alex, and this will be Alex at gmail.com, for example. And Alex was born in 2004, for example, right? And don't worry about the age. We're going to sort this in a second. And now we have two students and we want to save it into our database. So here, the way we save to our database is as follows. We invoke our repository dot, and then we can say save and have a look. We can save one student or we can pass a list of students. So here we want to save all. And this takes a list just like that. And I'm going to pass Mariam and Alex, just like that. And then here, and this with semicolon, and there we go. Now let's restart the server. And check this out. So you can see that now we have a bit more logging. And here we have insert into student, these columns, and then these values. And then we have another insert. So here into student and then these values. So basically we can see the SQL that hibernate is running when we invoke save all. So now let me go back to my web browser. And remember before we had an empty list. So if I refresh this, check this out. So we have two students coming from our database. And here, if I select start from student, there we go. This is from our database. And even within IntelliJ, so in here, I can open the console, say select, basically the exact same thing. So here, let me just be a little bit lazy and copy this command here. There we go. Go back, paste that in semicolon and then execute. And you can see it's a bit more slow, but you can see that the results are here as well. And cool thing here is I can view as and then transpose and check this out. So we have the results here. So this is Mariam and this is Alex. So you can see the power of Spring Boot and Spring Data JPA already. It allows you to build software really fast. And so far we have everything working. So we have the get request that gives us a list of students. And upon a client sending a request, we have the service layer for business logic, the data access, we have the database up and running and everything is configured beautifully. Now, all we have to do is to implement these three other HTTP methods. So post for saving new resources, put for updating, delete for deleting. So if you have any questions, drop me a message. Otherwise, catch me in the next one. Right, before we implement the post method in here that will allow us to save new students into our system, what I want to do is take care of age. Basically, I don't want age to be stored in our database because we can calculate that based of the date of birth. So to do that, let's go ahead and open up IntelliJ. And in here, what I'm going to do is the following. Let me collapse this and this, and then open up the student class. And this field right here, so private and an integer age, I'm going to annotate this with at and then transient. So one thing also, so make sure that whatever package that you import, 
you always use the java.persistence because that way if we change from hibernate to another provider behind the scenes everything will still work because it will follow this implementation right here so from persistence so what this at transient does basically it just says right this field right here there is no need for you to be a column in our database so which means that age will be calculated for us so let's go ahead also and um, remove age from the constructors so here so age is gone let's remove the age from here so that's gone and from here as well and also we actually forgot from here so there we go and in here age goes away as well and now if i go back to our student config so in here so this no longer works there we go so that's gone and also in here that goes away and now we want to basically calculate this right so we want to basically calculate the age for us and the way we do it is inside of student so in here where we say get and then age so what we're going to do is say period from java time dot and then between and i want to get the date so the start date so this will be date of birth or dob and then local date and then dot now and then here i want to get and then years there we go and now we have the number of years and also let me say this dot dob oops this dot dob and there we go so now let's go ahead and start the server so there we go server up and running and in here remember before we had two students and then age was 2121 because this was actually art coded so now this should actually be real so if i refresh and you can see that now age is 21 and this fair enough is 17. and also in our database so if i describe the database you can see that age is no longer a column in our database and this is because in here so if i collapse this so remember we added add and then transient next let's go ahead and implement the ability for our api to save students from our client for our post request we want to send this payload right here to our server and we want to check whether the email exists if it doesn't then we save the student to our database if the email is taken we want to throw an exception so let's go ahead and open up IntelliJ and in here inside of student controller you've seen this class and remember we have implemented get mapping now let's implement the API that will take a payload and then store that in our system so post is used when you want to add new resources to your system in our case we want to add a new student so here let's go ahead and say public and then void and then i'm going to say register and a new and then student and this will take a student just like that and now what we want to do is invoke the service dot and then add new and then student and then pass student inside now from here what i'm going to do is press option and then enter and i'm going to create this method inside of the service class and there we go so at this point i'm not going to do anything because i want to go back in here to the controller 
And in order for this to work, we need to do the following. So here, this will be at and then post and then mapping. And inside, we're not going to configure anything because this is more than enough. And we want to take the student that comes from the client. So this JSON blob right here, we want to map that into this student by taking it from the response or actually request. So request and then body. So this is what this means, right? So we take the request body and then we map it into a student right here. So now we're going to add the student. So let's open up the add new student. And for now, let's just say South and then student. So let's just rerun the application. And within IntelliJ, Right here, you can see that we can test. So in here, we can test our API. So I'm going to say open in client. There we go. So this will be opposed to localhost and then 8080 API view on students. Oops, there we go. And I actually need an example. Oh, actually, yeah, so there we go. So this is an example with the payload. So here we want that, but instead what I want is this payload right here, just like that. And this will do this request in here, but for now we're not implemented. We haven't implemented this logic nor this one. We're just logging to see whether we can send a request to our server. So here I'm going to run this request. So run, there we go. That seems to have finished. And let me open up the console, run and check this out. So in here we have student ID null, name Bilal, email Bilal Ahmed, and then the date of birth and then age equals to null. So this is awesome. So we've managed to take this payload and then send it across to our server. So in here, you see that I'm using IntelliJ and you can also use, for example, Postman or any REST client to perform this operation in here. But the reason why I like IntelliJ is that everything is integrated, especially if you're using the Ultimate Edition. Next, let's go ahead and take this student from our service class and then check whether the email exists. If it doesn't, we save. If not, we throw an exception. All right, so now that we have the student right here, we can perform some business logic. And what we want first is to open up the repository. So in here, we have our student repository and we want to have a custom function here that will find a user by email. So to do that is very simple. And here we can have this done in a couple of ways. We can have an optional and this will be student and then we can construct. So let me import that first. We can construct the query based of the method name. So find, and you can see that I'm getting auto completion, student by, and then email. And here I'm going to say string and then email. So this is one way. And this here will transform to an SQL such as select and then star from and then student where email equals to whatever we pass. So this is one way of doing things, or we can annotate this with at and then query in here. And this we can say select and then S, so lowercase s, so this is an alias, from and then student and then S, where 
and then s dot email equals to question mark and then one. So I'm actually going to leave this in here because you know what is happening with this name. So again, I can comment this or I can be actually more specific and say that this is the query that I'm actually running. And bear in mind that this is J this is JPQL and not straight SQL. And this student right here, this one is our class, our student class. So this name here. So when we said at entity and then student, so this is this, and then we can access all of the uh, properties. So email, age, so on and so forth. So now let's go back to the service class. And in here, we can do the following. We can say repository. So our student repository dot and then find by email and then student dot get email. And again, we can we can um, do lots of validations here, but I'm going to keep it super simple. And in here, I'm going to say we're going to try and find a student by that given email, right? So student by email. And let me put this on a new line just like that. And now I can say if student by email dot and then is and then present. So if this is the case, I want to throw. So for now, let's just say throw new and then illegal state exception. And I'm going to say email taken, for example, right? So obviously, um, there are better ways of handling exceptions. And you should have your custom exceptions, but this will do the trick. And let me also rename this to and then student and then optional. There we go. If the student is not present, we want to save our student. And again, you can check whether the email is valid or not. You can do, you know, much more complex validation than this, but I'm just keeping things simple. So here now I'm going to say repository. So student repository dot and then save. And then we want to save the student just like that. And there we go. So to be honest, this is everything. You can see that we've added a new method into our repository and we have some business logic going on. Next, let's go ahead and test this and see it working. Next, let's go ahead and test this. So let me stop the server. Oh, actually, um, in here. So this is the server and it's not running. So just give it a second. There we go. So up and running. Now let me go back to this request in here that we had before. And what I'm going to do is run this request. So this one to student and then with the same payload and then run. You can see that this post right here was a 200 status code. And in here, let's go ahead and try and fetch all the students. You can see that we have Bilal. So this is now in our database and ID three in here. So this is working. So if I try and send the exact same request, so I'm going to send the exact same request. You can see that we do get a status code 500 in here and the message is empty. So let's fix this message here. So to get the message from our exception that we just threw, we open up the application properties and in here at the bottom, let's go ahead and say server and then dot error. And we have include message. So this guy right here. And let's say always. So restart the server. There we go. So if I send the request again, so in here. So remember, uh, every time that we restart the application, we lose everything. 
Um, so the first time around that we send this request, this will work. There we go. So 200 status code. So in here, 200. And if I send the request again, you can see that now we get a status code 500, but the message here is the one that we added in our exception. And that is email taken. So there you have it. You can see that we implemented the post functionality nicely. And right here, so we actually implemented the get and post right here. Next, let's go ahead and implement the ability to delete students from our database. All right, so let's implement the delete method in here where we want to delete a given student by an ID. So open up IntelliJ and in here, let's open up the controller. So student controller. And what we're gonna do here is the following. We're gonna have another method so public and then void, delete, and then student. And right here, this will be at and then delete mapping. And for deleting, what we want is inside, I'm going to say that this has a path equals and then within I want to pass the student and then ID. There we go, just like that. Now, inside we can grab this student ID by saying at and then path and then variable and refer to it. So student and then ID, just like that. And this will be long. So this is the type and oops, and this will be ID, just like that. And we can enforce that it's not null and other things, but for now, let's just keep it nice and simple. Now let's go ahead and say student service dot and then delete and then student. And here we're going to pass the ID. So oops, ID just like that. And then let's create that within our student service. And this will be student ID. In fact, let me go back here. And this will be student ID. Just like that. So you can see how easy it is for us to take something from the path. So this is a path variable and you'll see this in a second. So now let's go back to the service class. And in here, I want to say student repository dot and then check this out. We have a bunch of methods. So here I want to find and then by ID pass student ID. And then here I'm going to say dot or let me actually see whether we have exists. So student repository. Let's just say here student repository dot exists. Yes, we have an exists that returns a Boolean. So let's just use this instead. So there we go, student ID. And I'm going to say exists. So if and then does not exists, I want to throw new and then illegal state exception student with ID and then plus ID. Oops, so actually shoot an ID. And let me put this just like that. And then plus does not exists. Otherwise, if this is the case, I want to say student repository dot and then delete. And then in here, I want to delete by ID and then pass student ID. And to be honest, this is everything for this API call. So let's restart the server. There we go. 
So in here, let's have, so basically we want to have a delete. So we have get put, so in here, what we want, we want to have a delete method. So here, let's just take all of this. And in fact, we just need that. And then in here, I guess we need to add pound sign three times, just like that. Paste that in, change this from post to delete, and then student. And here, I'm going to delete student one. So if I refresh this, we should have two students, right? Mariam and Alex. So I'm going to delete Mariam. And in here, if I run this, and by the way, this is the path variable, right? Forward slash and then one, and this here is what we captured inside of this controller. So this ID right here. Now, if I run this, you can see that we have a 200 status code, which means that the request went fine. And if I refresh this, you can see that Mariam is now gone. So if I run the exact same request, there we go. And we get an exception back. And the message is student with ID one does not exist. There you have it. We've implemented this method right here. And now we can delete students from our system. Finally, let's go ahead and implement the put functionality. All right, for put, what I want you to do is to give it a try to implement the functionality to be able to update both name and email. So put is used when you want to update a resource in your system. In our case, we want to update name and email. So for this exercise, what I'm going to do is to have a method like this one here. So update student in your service class and then use this annotation at transactional, which you haven't learned about it. But by using this annotation right here, it means that you don't have to implement any JPQL query. So you can use the setters from your entity that you get back to check whether you can or cannot update. And then you can use the setters to automatically update the entity in your database. Again, use the setters to update the entity when it's possible. So go ahead and try and, and write some business logic for this exercise. And I'm gonna give you the solution in the next video. All right, let me go through the solution for the put mapping where we want to update students. So remember, I asked you to update name and email. So what I went ahead was I added this method right here. And in here we have a path variable. So student ID, and you've seen this, but then we have a request parameter in here for both name and email where they're both not required. And then I pass it down to the service with the name update student. And inside of this update student, I've told you to use this annotation at transactional. So here I'm just doing simple business logic. I'm checking whether the student exists with that ID. Otherwise we throw an exception. And then if the name not equal to null and the name length is greater than zero and the name provided is not the same as the current one. So if that's not the case, we want to set the name just like this. And we do the same for email. So it's the exact same logic right here, but we also check that the email right here hasn't been taken. If it's taken, we throw an exception. Otherwise we update the student by just saying student.set email. So here you see that we're not using any queries from our repository in here. We're not using any queries. And this is because of this annotation right here at transactional, 
which when we have this annotation, the entity goes into a managed state. And I cover all of this in my Spring Data JPA course. So it's really important that you understand exactly how this annotation works. But in a nutshell, this is what's happening. Now, let me go ahead and show you that in here, we have Mariam and Alex right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a new request. And this will be a request to V1 and then student and then one, we want to update Mariam, and we want to assign a new name called Maria. Now, if I send this request, you can see that it's a 200. And now in here, this should be Maria instead of Mariam. So if I refresh, you can see that there we go. So Maria instead of Mariam. Let's also update the email. So here I'm going to just say that the new email now. So in here, I'm going to say, and, and then email equals to, and let's just say, uh, this time is just Maria and then send. There we go. 200 status code. And if I refresh, you can see that the email has been updated. So there you have it. As I said, if you want to learn more about Spring Data JPA, go ahead and check my course where I teach about all of this. But basically, the entity life cycle right here, where, where I mentioned that uh, the entity went into a managed state. So in here, managed state, it's because of this. So it's really important that you understand this in order to fully grasp the concept and take full advantage of Spring Data JPA. Right, so, so far you've seen the power of Spring Boot, right? It's, it's amazing. So I just wanna talk about testing because testing is something that you as a software engineer, you should know. And when it comes to Spring Boot, everything that you know about TDD, mocking, testing external services, um, basically JUnit, all of that stuff, you can take all of those skills and use them to um, basically test your applications, right? So in this course, we haven't done any testing, but testing is something that you should know inside out. So I've got a course for you um, on testing, and I definitely recommend you because um, that will set you apart from other developers, right? So I remember, uh, you know, back in the days, I used to work with people that wouldn't test their code and then uh, deploy to production without any tests. But you know, if you want, if you are serious about it, then you should know testing. So in my testing course, you you're going to learn about uh, what is testing. You're going to learn about the JUnit framework, assertions, uh, mocking. Uh, you know, why should you use uh, dependency injection and you, you'll see you know when it comes to testing why it's so important um so you're going to learn about mocking as i said and also um i'm going to show you um integration tests right so this is when you spin up your um entire application and then you fire up requests just to make sure that everything works so unit testing integration testing test driven development you will learn uh, that on the course as well. And um, more important also, how do you test external services? For example, uh, Stripe, right? I'm gonna show you um, a Stripe use case where we don't want to connect um, to their real uh, systems to perform the integration tests. So I'll show you how to test uh, against external services. So yeah, so um, as I said, Spring Boot doesn't give you uh, much in terms of testing. So um, if you want to do like contract testing, they do have spring contract tests, which is, um, I actually haven't used it, but it's it's there, but this is more for when you are working with microservices. But apart from that, um, you know, testing, it's something that if you know it, then you can just use it and test your applications. If you don't know it, then I highly recommend you to enroll to my course where I teach you about testing.
Now let's go ahead and learn how to take our API, produce a jar that we can then run multiple instances of our application. So let me go back to IntelliJ. And in here, what I want you to do is the following. So if you see a target folder in here, go ahead and delete it. And once you delete it, open up Maven. So Maven tab, and then here, you can clean the project first. So this will get rid of the target folder. And in fact, let me just show you. So if I run this project, there we go, you can see that. So let me actually stop it. So you can see that we have a target folder. Now this target folder contains a couple of things. So it contains the classes in here, generate sources, and basically that hasn't finished, right? So what I want to do is the following. So here, let's um, stop the, the application from running and open up Maven and then do a clean. So run the clean job. So this will get rid of the target folder. You'll see in a second. And there we go. So that's finished and you can see the target is gone. Now let's install the application and make sure your database is up and running. So install, and this will clean, validate, compile, test, package, verify. And then inside, we're going to have the um, jar file, which we can then run manually. So just give it a second. So you can see that now it's running the tests. And we haven't got any tests, to be honest. So there's nothing uh, that we've done with testing. And uh, again, if you want to learn about testing, go ahead and check my website where I've got a complete course just on testing. And there we go. So you can see that we have a green tick in here, and then we have the target folder. Now inside of this target folder, so here, if I expand this, you can see that we have demo and then basically snapshot and then jar. So this is what we are interested in. Now, let me open up the terminal from here. So open up terminal. And then you can see that I'm inside of demo. So this folder here is this one. And now I can navigate to target. So CD and then target. And now we can run our application from here. So here I'm going to say Java dash and then jar and then the name of the jar. So demo, and then I've just pressed tab and you can see that we have auto completion there. Now I'm gonna press enter, just give you a second. And basically the logs are too big in here. Uh, let me see if I can zoom out. So I can't really zoom out, but you can see that we have um, a couple of things. And basically the application now is up and running, right? So which means that I can navigate to localhost. So if I open up my web browser and here, this is the previous example, but now if I refresh, you can see that the application still works and we could test all the um, post, put, delete, basically everything will work. So basically we've managed to do this, right? So we've packaged up our application into a jar and now we've run uh, one instance. If you want to run a different instance, it is completely up to you and you can run as many as you want, but you need to specify the port. So in here, because port, so if I um, open up in here, so if I press control C, right? So that shut down the application. And if I refresh, you can see that now it doesn't work. But if you want to run, for example, the application on a different port, just run the same command and then you can say dash dash server dot and then port equals to and then let's say 80 81 for example enter there we go up and running and then refresh this doesn't work but now here if i say 80 81 and check this out you can see that the application is now working so there you have it you now know how to package up your application, and then from a jar, spin up an instance that contains your application. And basically, from now on, you can basically take the jar, you can deploy it to a server, or you can uh, dockerize it, you can pretty much do anything you want with your jar file to deploy it for real users um, 
to use your application. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop me a message. Otherwise, let's move on. All right, so it was a pleasure teaching you about Spring Boot. Let me know what you thought about this course and what you want to see next. So the next videos, I'm planning on providing you guys with more um, tutorials on Spring and Spring Boot framework. So probably the next video will be something along the lines of creating a full registration service um, where maybe we, we send an email and then you have to register against their system and um, we'll also use some Spring security stuff along the way. So um, yeah, so it was a pleasure teaching you at Spring Boot. Let me know what you thought about this video. Um, you know, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And on my website, I've got courses uh, on Spring Data JPA, Spring Full Stack, um, testing, as I said. So go ahead and check those courses out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video because that way you will boost up your skills um, and um, become a, a better developer, right? So knowing Spring Boot and Java well enough, there are so many jobs out there and I can guarantee you that with the courses that I have for you, um, you won't be disappointed. And in fact, I, I have so many students that have benefited from these courses. Some of them, they, they, they got jobs, others, they, they finished university and also got jobs. So yeah, so go ahead and uh, check those, those, those courses. Also join the community. I would love to have you there. Join the community. Um, and yeah, this is all for now. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.